get us started, like obviously we're, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, but let's get us started. <laughs> what is IED? Uh, intermittent Explosive Disorder is a disorder that uh, um, uh, if you get angry, you get a switch from, okay, I'm going to walk away. Uh, at a point, you walk away. And I skip over that point and full-blown go in a rage. At what point in your life was that? First, an issue. Uh, Eleven. Okay. It was really young, but that's uh, intermittent uh, intermittent explosive disorder uh, can happen through multiple things, like if you have been through physical abuse, you have a higher chance to get intermittent explosive disorder. Uh, another way to get it is genetics. So your father or dad uh, or mother has it. And mental health is also a really important uh, factor in intermittent explosive disorder because people with antisocial, uh, antisocial personality disorder, borderline and other disruptive uh, uh, disorders and uh, ADHD is all, all is all giving you a higher chance to also have intermittent explosive disorder. Yeah. Okay. So you said it obviously became a problem for you at eleven. Um, was that like first notice within your family, or was that you were taken off to the doctors? How was that? How was it dealt with at that age? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got diagnosed and my foster, I was in foster care at that point. Uh, they didn't really do anything with it. The only thing they tried to do is to lock me up after school. And uh, they really didn't give a shit if I get treatment or not. So, you know, so obviously, um, you know, I, I, again, you're, 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 you, you bring your, I don't like bringing people's ages up, but you bring yours up all the time. So, um, so, so I'm 44. Yeah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so this is like 33 years ago. Like what was the mental health uh, was a big taboo that yeah. was put away. So I was, uh, diagnosed with uh, CPTSD and uh, the IAD at 11 because uh, a lot of childhood trauma. But for CPTSD, I got treatment that totally didn't work because you didn't want to talk to a, a girl at that age. You're really ashamed mm -hmm. from everything what happened. Yeah. Do you want to talk about any of what happened? It's completely up to you how much of it you talk about. Um, my parents were addicts. Um, uh, my father was really abusive in every form you can think of. Um, it's also why I'm a little bit skeptical to, to, uh, towards people. Yeah. Because all the shit I've been through my life was a hell and in the in, in the years I it, it get got better I, there was better help for me mm -hmm. there were more diagnoses that really helped me uh, I don't want to I don't want to talk. I really don't like to talk about my past. Yeah, yeah that's I, that's why I'm not. I'm not going to kind of 
deliberately dig into it. And as, as I said to you in the kind of pre-interview kind of chat um, on uh, through Discord and stuff, it's like if any of the questions, if you want to pass on any of the questions, please just pass, um, you know, tell, you know. I was about to say just tell me to fuck off if you want, but then I think, I know you. I know if you did, even as a joke, you'd probably then go and beat yourself up about it. So just don't, like, it's like... <laughs> because <laughs> i don't uh, you know me we, too well we well we don't we don't want that um how again is if as i say feel free to pass on these how what was it that led for you to be taken out of your parents care and put into foster care then uh like i said uh, all the abuse uh sexual physical mental abuse Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's enough. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, there happen shit happened, but I don't really don't want to talk about it. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely understand. So, um, okay, so so at at eleven, there was like, was the what was the kind of the the doctor's knowledge uh, or what was expressed to you at that age in terms of about IED? Because to kind of put this into context, as I have to put, as, uh, well, as you've heard me uh, speak uh, about before, what I was told about bipolar when I was 14 compared to what I've learned <laughs> since um, is it, they're, they're like, it's like, you know, night and day. It's so different. Um, what was the kind of, what was the understanding of it? How was it treated I, at that time? I don't even think they called it uh, intermittent explosive disorder at that time. Okay. Uh, they called it an aggression uh, aggression disorder. And I, what I understand, what I, uh, I talked to the psych- psychologist like two weeks ago, only... Late nineties, they start calling that uh, intermittent explosive disorder. It's not that even that old. Mm-hmm. So, for yourself, what? How did the treatment kind of how how has that evolved over time? So, from when you were eleven, they were giving you they give you know they gave you some therapy about it. That was hard to open up about because you weren't you know you weren't ready to speak about a lot of those things. Um, yeah. How has your treatment changed over time? Um, it took me a really long time. Uh, many therapists, many different types of therapy they tried on me. And only in the last five to ten, uh, five to ten years, and it got really well. The, they on the way, I feel like they way more understand when you're suffering from a disorder. Not always to push. Yeah. Uh, but I felt growing up and getting therapies, you were pushed to talk. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I did was shut up because if you push me, it does the opposite. I just shut down. Yeah. So what? And you say obviously in the last ten years, what has um, what has changed? What is like what is helping now? Um, they're they're not stretched to one type of therapy. Sometimes they try something else. Well, during a uh, uh, CBT, I uh, hate CBT uh, therapies, but. <laughs> They are not for me, but they try some out outside of the box things with you, and that that's made me feel like at least they're trying to help me. Yeah, not sticking to the standard standard therapies of uh, CBT. Just uh, the other one, DBT. Yeah. Yeah. Have there been any uh, moments for you what you'd describe as having a breakthrough with it? A breakthrough for me is pretty recent. After my uh, bipolar this bipolar uh, diagnose, uh, I have a really amazing therapist. I see. She lets me see things that I didn't see about myself that I could be proud of. Uh, a lot of therapies 
in my opinion, were really pushed on me. And well, yeah, I shut down and I get annoyed. And intermittent explosive disorder is really bad if you get annoyed. Mm -hmm. We get really aggressive also. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you have? So is that something that you have more control over now with the therapy or is it more so you have more understanding and you, people around you have more understanding? Uh, it's a combination of both. I think therapy is really help, helpful. Uh, there is no medication or a cure for the disorder. But you can uh, learn to live with it. And when you tell people around you and explain what it is, they understand more. Pe people are changed. Mm -hmm. Mental health is not longer a really stupid thing where people walk away from. Yeah. How is, um, if, how, what is the kind of overall feelings about mental health within the Netherlands? Is it, is it like a people on the whole, like more positive about it? Or is it kind of, is there a lot of stigma? I don't think there is a much stigma anymore. There was a lot of stigma till like the late nineties. Mm -hmm. And yeah, oh, everywhere is mental health. So if you can't, you can do really stupid about it and think it's not real. It's not real. But uh, that doesn't help anyone. And if you get something yourself, you you will uh, la be laughed after. I wanted to say, but I'm not sure. But a lot of people, let's say, a lot of people are really open about mental health. Mm -hmm in the Netherlands. And it's really easy to get mental health help if you really need it. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, how, this is possibly, this is possibly a kind of mean question. Again, this is cause this is from kind of knowing you through, through conversations we've had over the last couple of years. Um, <laughs> how would you say your attitude is about, other people's mental health versus your attitude towards your own? And is that changing? Uh, I give everybody a slack with mental health and I beat myself up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know me. Is that something that, is that something that you uh, are it's, getting? It's getting, it's getting better though. Okay. I talked with somebody yesterday and I might have made them cry uh, because I said I was proud of myself for what I've done with my, with my life to, so far. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm proud of you too. Actually, I, I promise I'm not making you cry today. So, like, yeah, let's oh. let's just let's just slide straight past that. But I am. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, but but yeah, it's it's. Um, uh, I, I forgot what I was going to say because a, ra a raid came in and distracted me and I wasn't going to... Thank you, Raiders. Um, I don't normally thank directly in the middle of a podcast, but my attention got fractured, so now I am doing... But I will I will, I will thank you properly if you're still here uh, in about 40 minutes, but I'm, going, I'm, in, I'm in podcast mode at the minute. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, with yourself, with, you know, you mentioned obviously your parents being addicts, and I know that like addiction is something that has been a part of your journey as well. Like, what again, only to the level that you're happy to talk about, what is the story there? Uh, um, I need to tell it again. Okay, I told this yesterday. <laughs> um, I was really young when I started using drugs, uh, I was almost 11, almost 12. Just started smoking weed. Then I got over to ecstasy, uh, amphetamine and cocaine. So I was 22. And uh, I were, I, my friends, I love them because they saved me because 
they got me in a program from some rich dude uh, from the Netherlands and got me in a rehab center in South Africa. So I didn't walk out of the rehab again. Mm -hmm. And that's, I was 22 when I come out of the rehab. And since then I had one relapse and I'm 20 year, 22 years sober. You've got to be proud of yourself for that, right? Um, like, do you realize? I'm, I mean, I'm I'm about to go actually. <laughs> do you like? I mean, because I I've only ever heard you talk about it in in pieces before, so I didn't realize. I mean, like, do you realize how one relapse in that amount of time? Do you realize how rare that is? Like, do you realize what kind of strength that takes? And now you could sit there and say, oh yeah, it was just a really good relapse. It was just a really good rehab program. And you could, you know, say that that was blame the program or whatever. But no, you did that. Uh, over, over that program in the rehab, they do that uh, dual diagnose. So they did uh, the addiction part and they did... Uh, part of uh, your mental health so you understand better why you were addicted yeah yeah i mean and that's a really great system it, to it's, work with. yeah it's it's what's necessary because i mean here in the uk dual diagnosis is like it's it's almost it's almost a death sentence i actually know people that it has essentially been because the dr the mental health services are like well you've got to stop the drugs and the drug services are like, you've got to fix your mental health. And they basically just play tennis with the person. No one taking responsibility for them, just knocking them back and forth. And um, so to find a center that actually, uh, like that actually says, right, well, we're going to, it's, you know, it's like, we've got two problems. So, and we can't deal, and we, and so we're going to, so we can't deal with either one of them first. So we're going to just deal with neither of them. And that's just, I don't understand how that is seen as the right way to handle it. You know, it just, doesn't make any sense even when you say it but yeah it's stupid yeah i think we only do dual diagnosis here now when but like 22 years ago we had was like everywhere else again mm -hmm. i don't know for sure i didn't check anything if they do dual diagnose in rehab but i guess they do yeah well, most people that are addicted are people having issues with mental health or having been through hell. You're not going to use drugs for your fun. Mm. So, so at what point did did um, did the bipolar diagnosis come in? Oh, <laughs> last uh, uh, end end January this year. All right, okay. And between sort of between in the sort of twenty two years between that time in rehab and now, were there were there any other like alternate diagnosis? Was there any kind of was there any you know, how was how was that process handled then? Uh ADHD, uh, social anxiety were diagnosed as I'm not sure anymore. Twenty three I think. So what was it that led to, I've give, you know, with you struggling for that length of time, what was it that led to actually exploring a different avenue 22 years later? Uh, well, we tried to get more, uh, more research done, but they just didn't want to do it because they said, yeah, but all the diagnosis you have overlaps with all the other diagnoses so it's probably the dose diagnosis and not uh, what you think it is. But they didn't want to expose, explain me why I didn't sleep for six to eight days hmm. straight up and had so much energy. So with getting the diagnosis of bipolar this year, um, is that something that you look back now and a lot of earlier things in your life make sense? Uh, with my bipolar, much more under control, yes. 
I don't think she makes sense. And it's it's making me feel more at ease. I, I it's it's just like I have my bipolar pretty much under control. I have lost less issues with my uh, with with other disorders like my ADHD or with my intermittent explosive disorder mm -hmm. because I can control myself better. Yeah. So your bi am I correct in saying that your bipolar is type one? Uh, I'm not sure, but they diagnosed me with. Oh, okay, fair enough. I was going to say because we've talked, we've talked about type two on this podcast a lot because I have type two, Lindsay has type two, uh, Toki has type two. We've got we've got quite a bit of type two within our community. Um, I was wondering if you, I thought yours was type one because I was going to try and see maybe explore how that is different because I think I think it's worth people kind of understanding. But if you're not one hundred percent sure in it, then. Um, no. I will still, I'll still I, ask the I question. Can, I, I can ask my my uh, my doctor and we can do a reschedule and talk about the difference if I'm one. Okie dokes. Um, so what I will ask though is, is again, because I, I always, I like to ask this even though it's a condition that I have myself and I've had for, you know, well, I've had my entire life, but I've been diagnosed for 26 years. It's... Um, like I am not the poster child for bipolar disorder. It's like I don't understand everything there is to know about bipolar disorder, and we all experience it differently. What is bipolar disorder like for you? Um, uh, no, it's it's okay. <laughs> now I have <laughs> now I have something. Else. Okay, it's it's yours something is okay, like man. Isn't what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I need this oh, therapist. Mike, 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 Mike can switch off. I, was gonna, I, was gonna go. say, I, I, say, you I, I need this therapist of yours, and I need a support bunny. <laughs> well, it, it's it's it, it's manageable. I, of course, I still have my high points and low points, but it's not that that hard anymore. Medication therapy, uh, my bunny, it all helps. Yeah. How does your current therapist, basically, how do they handle the, the as you say, it's, there's all these diagnoses, there's a lot of overlap, when, and a lot of a lot of doctors in the past have said, well, we don't know if it's this one, if it's that one. It's like, how does how does your therapist navigate that? Uh, uh, well, my therapist is specialized on bipolar, so she only does the bipolar part. Right. And the Netherlands, for every, every, almost every diagnosis, have, have another therapist. Okay. So you get a specialist for each condition. Yes. So if you had like a specialist for the bipolar and a specialist for the IED, would they actually work together or would it be more like they're not communicating and you'd have to regurgitate things a lot of times? Uh I don't know because they are still doing a lot of stuff. Um, first, they're going to, uh, for me, they're going to focus on the complex PTSD. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm going into a hospital, don't know when yet, for six to eight weeks for emotional uh, exposure therapy. Okay. I'm not looking forward to it, but I need to get my head better. Yeah. What was it that led you um, to actually, you know, outright say yesterday that you're proud of yourself? Because that is, you know, that is unusual for you. What was it that <laughs> got you to that moment? Um, the fact that Everybody around me says that I changed. Uh, I'm more mellow. Uh, I'm starting to less beat myself up about things I can't do or what 
issues that will happen where I can't help it that it happens. Uh, how do I say that? Things that are out of your control. Yes. Yeah. No, it's important. I think, you know, it's especially when you've got any condition as well, it's there's there's two ends of the spectrum. There's beating yourself up about absolutely everything you do. And then there's letting yourself off the hook for absolutely everything. And in either of those two situations, we end up with problems. So a person who beats themselves up about everything that they do, like, in, like you know, both the things that are within and outside of their control, whereas that person thinks that everything is their fault, they're going to have problems. Whereas a person who essentially uses the condition as a way to kind of brush everything that happens under the carpet that person's probably never going to take accountability that person's probably never going to realize that actually within these conditions there are things that are within my control and you know sometimes it's my diagnosis other times it's just me being a dick and i say that having been the person who is that dick sometimes you know and um and i think like I think people tend to kind of the pendulum tends to swing both ways you know like a lot of times especially when when trauma is present at first um it pushes a person to believe that everything is their fault because everything was treated as their fault when they were little you know and it's a um, it's very very difficult to get that like when and then when you get that you know when you kind of tell that person no look these things happened to you the condition means that these reactions are kind of more normal for want of a better word for um for yourself and then it's but it's fine in that it's fine in that right spot on that on that continuum and it's different from person to person as to like how much of your condition is within your control and how much of it is, is without you know i still i still think back to kind of mental health matt who was a poker player and poker coach talked about like what he learned from poker that was relevant to mental health and he said and this is still one of like my favorite like you know favorite pieces of advice to ever appear on my channel and i'm including all the crap that i've said <laughs> but um, but he was like he said poker teaches you to be to be intimately aware of the things that you're in control of the things that you're not and the difference between the two and i guess if um you know i, I take it through through rehab your yours was it through narcotics anonymous or was it because they utilize the serenity prayer, which is, you know, give me the strength to change the things that I can. Um, the courage to, the courage to, oh, aha, someone put the serenity prayer in chat for me. But it's something, it's basically the, the, the wisdom to know, the serenity, sorry, the serenity, that's called the serenity prayer, and I forgot the word serenity. Give me the serenity to accept the things that I can't change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference between the two. And, um, and I, I think there's there's a lot of power in that, you know? And it's like for yourself, being proud of the things that you've done and also being accepting of the things that maybe you've done that, that with a condition taking control. It's a, uh, I think that's really, I think it's awesome. I, just, I think it's amazing. And I'm, I'm genuinely extremely happy that you've got to a place where you can say that, even if it's just the once so far. I don't want you saying it like all the time, but. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it makes me it makes me really really happy that you're in a place where you are able to be proud of yourself and um yeah just wanted to it's it's not it's not that easy i still have those days that i think that i'm nothing that i don't deserve anything mm -hmm. that's the bipolar disorder talking you know because i still have i, I yeah or, <laughs> or, the, or, or the cptsd well, or, or the <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna say like for, yeah for me the i the, the way i say it is I, I you know if i'm if i'm up here i think i'm the shit <laughs> and if i'm down here i think i just think i'm shit uh, it's like and it's and those those thoughts can occur in my head in the same day and for people who've not experienced that, that sounds like a really bizarre thing. How can you be like almost, you know, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say like I'm ever full of myself or egotistical, but I'm certainly more ready to ex express praise for myself when, my, when, I'm, when I'm in a manic episode. Um, and obviously, as soon as I get into that due to depressive episode, it's, um, it's, it's fine in that way to, uh, you know, not listen to not listen to the depression that's there it's because it's the depression talking it's not it's not me saying that i'm worthless it's the depression trying to tell me that i'm worthless you know it's and and it's bloody loud and it's really convincing 
Um, <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and it is, it's a learning process. It's like, you know, as I always say to other people on this channel, when, when I say, oh, you know, you've got to speak to yourself like you do a friend, but that's not just Dave says that and you go, okay, and then you do it. It's like, it's it's practice, it's, it's, it's repetition. It's when you find yourself speaking to yourself like a piece of crap. It's like actually calling yourself out on it and saying, you know what, I'm not doing that anymore. And if you can go from speaking to yourself like crap 24 hours a day to I only speak to myself like crap 18 hours a day to eventually I only speak to myself like crap two times a week, that's huge. But like, I, I, I feel called out. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Really badly. I do that a lot. Now I, I met two day, <laughs> two hours a day. Yeah, well, and I'm, not every day. <laughs> hey, look, it's I, I, it's you feel called out because that's what that's that's the whole process I've had to go through. Like, and, and st I say had to go through, um, still going through. It. Like, I put this um, anonymous question thing on Twitter and Instagram yesterday, and I was really good, actually. I really enjoyed it. And someone just said, oh, how do you how do you manage to be to always be such an awesome human or something? And I was like, oh, that's really nice, but I'm not always. It's like, um, you know, I fail. I make mistakes. I beat myself up. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm often kinder to other people than I am to me. And I'm not always 100% kind to other people because some days I just haven't got the fucks to give. <laughs> you know, and um, I said, but the, the, what the only thing that's, the only thing that's matured in me as I, as you know, as I enter into my 40s also is, um, is the fact that I noticed that and I, and I stopped myself from doing it sometimes not always one day i hope it's always i hope it's always i hope eventually i don't ever let myself talk to myself like i would never accept from anybody else but uh i hope that too but i'm i'm pretty realistic <laughs> well you say you're realistic <laughs> but you know i remember having conversations with you where you thought that where you are now was impossible uh, so you didn't think it was realistic to get to where you are now at one point so you've already challenged your own ideas of what is realistic <laughs> I'm being a shit now aren't yeah, well, I? But, <laughs> <laughs> but with bipolar we both know that the depression shit will always try to win oh yeah 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 it's horrendous but I think going back to something you said earlier as well is the fact that um, you know because I thought I thought what you were gonna say was um, that this new therapist works on this um, like they they basically they were working on this integrated approach you know where this new therapist understood all the disorders and was working on this idea and what you said was actually you no know, is it a, that they're a specialist in the bipolar disorder and that's ultimately yes. and that's ultimately kind of what they've worked on and i think that's worth that's worth pointing out to anybody that's listening that might have like because let's face it not many of us get given get get one diagnosis. It's like it's like I think it was you and I that had this conversation at one point, saying that we've got like about you know if if, if only it was like that. I've got five diagnoses, and that meant four of the people went free. It was like that. Yeah. That would um, that would be quite nice, but um, but it's very rare that a person has. It's you know it's, it's that word that I hate comorbidities. Like most people have a comorbidity or two or six. Um, but it's and th when you can really easily fall into the trap of thinking, oh, I've got all of these things wrong with me. So if I fix this one thing, like what does what difference does it make? You know, whereas for yourself, you are like actually by working prime focusing primarily on the bipolar, bipolar disorder, it actually makes the IED a little bit better. It makes the CPTSD a little bit better. It's like your experience has been like that by fi by okay. implement is that safe to say is that fair to say yeah that, that's fair to say yeah uh, 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 you you can all scream yeah well focus on one and the others yeah well they focused on my bipolar my boat bipolar is much better on the under control yeah uh, i'm sleeping at night <laughs> that's nice <laughs> yeah, i sleep i sleep six to eight hours now that's awesome yeah, I was gonna but say because I've known you in the past because, to go 
days without any or like two hours <laughs> yeah but it's also because I get a medication it's antipsychotic and for me it also works uh, because of the low doses as um, a sleeping pill I only never can pronounce the name <laughs> It's okay. We're not supposed to talk about meds on here anyway. Well, not 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 in a way that makes a person go out and go, oh, I'm going to get myself some of those. <laughs> Always speak to your doctors, kids. <laughs> Always. <laughs> also, results may vary. It's like I'm working for the company, isn't it? Like, you know, taking this may actually cause you to bleed from your butthole. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> get the small print in the... We are not oh. responsible if you make inappropriate posts that's, on that's, social media. That's, that's, that's so weird where you see American commercials. Yeah. Yeah. 20 minutes all worth of pharma, All of pharmaceuticals. That's so illegal in Europe. <laughs> May cause all of the things that you're trying to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This antidepressant might cause depression. What do you know? <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's it's yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting system they've got going on over there. Uh, yeah. I think it's like it's it's the it's, I think they they give out they give out meds like far too readily, and then other countries maybe hold them back a little bit too much. <laughs> it's like again, the right answer is probably somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere in between. Yeah. I've just got distract distracted again by chat because Cassintra says I have a nice naked face. It's like, yes, that is true. I do not have a beard right now. It's 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 coming back. But um and I, and it's look, that's twice, two times. Distra chat's distracted me. Stop. I need to I need to just switch this monitor off. But I'll leave it on in case anything really, really important comes in that I need to give direct attention to. And even when that happens, I still don't do it. So um <laughs> that's uh, and now I need to like get me train of thought back to what we were talking about so i mean going back to the, again that same thing is that with dual diagnosis as you said it's like if some it before if if but if a person has a mental health mental health conditions alongside drug addiction it's like actually oftentimes it's not alongside it's like the drug addiction is a result of the mental health conditions or at least trying to escape those mental health conditions yes. and, and that's an unfortunate thing is the fact as you said before like um you know people with poor mental health it's like they're, re they're rarely using drugs for pleasure it's more to do with like okay i'm using these things to stop me from feeling something rather than to make me feel something else yeah and i think if we do if 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 like rather than especially this is and this is i suppose more for the uk really is um is if instead of like turning somebody away in that situation, it's like okay, like get that, um, getting that person the mental health help will actually, will actually help with the drug addiction, rather than telling a person they need to be clear of the drugs before they can actually get the help. Because, yeah, if one if one is under the other, it's more than likely going to be that the the, the mental health condition led to the drug abuse rather than the other way around. I'm not saying the other way around doesn't exist, but in most cases you know a person doesn't really go for drugs because everything's great <laughs> uh, I didn't yeah <laughs> um, what are what's what's kind of some of the biggest things that you've learned since since starting this new therapy Um, what did I learn? To get more sleep. It's, it's really helpful for men, uh, people with bipolar to sleep enough. Yeah. Um, but also, what 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 do I stuff in my mouth? But uh, at the the health service I am they also do a yearly fully body check uh, a physical health check so because when you're like me I'm way too big 
I need to go uh, 15 to 20 kilos. Uh, but they check also my blood pressure. I I did never had had an issue. I have have a blood pressure issue. Mm -hmm. So now I'm at the doctor's for uh, my blood pressure to get sorted. But what I learned from my therapy is that I, it's okay to feel shit when you have a bipolar a depression. I always tried to beat myself up about it, mm -hmm. that I was stupid, that I was, uh, that was okay to be depressed. But all, uh, all po I'm more positive since I'm having this therapy. Yeah. yeah. I understand that, that nothing is always my fault. It's, it makes me more relaxed. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think food food can be another... I mean, it was my very first coping mechanism for me was food and it i wasn't i wasn't craving salad it wasn't like it wasn't like oh i can't wait to fill my face with salad it was all stuff that was bad for me and i'm i mean i you know you know my background in the fact that you know i was training to be a nutritionist at one point so i was a personal trainer i'm not in i definitely don't like follow the whole rules of there are good and bad foods like you know i don't feel like i don't go down the idea of there's like certain foods being evil or anything like that but there are certainly better and worse choices and um yeah like the the one of the biggest learnings i you know that i got along the way when dealing with my own eating disorder was the um you know you look at i mean still i'm still absolutely astounded by you know your progress with after the rehab of 22 years what with only one relapse it's like but they talk about that if like the way to deal with a person who's got a problem with alcohol or with with drugs is to remove those things entirely right because one literally leads to you know one one exposure leads to multiple exposures or one drink leads to you know getting drunk one exposure to drugs leads to a drug binge um, and if you get people who one exposure to food leads to a food binge it's like well the problem is you can't take food away from a person and that's a big thing one of the big differences so it is about like it, it, it is about learning that but the issue is like again going back to listening to what your body wants versus what your mental health wants and your mental and your mental health by when i say what your mental health wants your your mental health is hard, is hardly ever speaking to you your condition speaking to you so the the positive part of my, my overall mental health is hardly ever saying sitting there saying dave I need good sleep right now. I need all this right now. Whereas the depression, being the loud thing it is, is like, is like, Dave, we need biscuits. Like, really need biscuits. You know, it's like, or it's like, oh, just get yourself this on the way home from work, or just get yourself that, or just do that, or just do that. Your mental health will make suggestions. And there are all these instant gratification suggestions. And, they're all, and most instant gratification stuff leaves you feeling worse later on as well. So... Yeah, it is. It's really important to it's important to to think of that. But something I've been thinking about this a lot recently because I've slipped back into a lot of old habits recently, and I've um, and you don't you don't sleep it. I don't think people to slip into habits like well, slipping into is the right word. Is that it was slow? It was like a slow little slide into 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 these bad habits where by the time you realise that something's bad for you you're already you've already been doing it for weeks or months you know and it's like oh i feel pretty rotten you know um i had to kind of as as i mean i think you saw me post over the weekend there was like really feeling completely utterly exhausted under the weather fatigued last weekend and i looked and i was like what am i what am i kind of doing it's like well I've, okay i feel a bit tired so what am i going to do i'm going to have some sugar and some caffeine that'll help me and it helps me for like an hour and then you know, affects me sleep later on, affects how I'm feeling later on. And long term it's not doing me any favours. So yeah, it's um it's definitely something that I'm having to take back control of right now as well. Uh, my friends always say that I have an iron will. I stopped smoking in twenty twenty in the pandemic. I haven't still haven't smoked since. 
It's amazing. You well, if, if you've got, I mean, I, I can. You must have an iron will to to you know to have dealt with um, recovery for that length of time. So it's a case of getting that iron will onto uh, onto uh, you know the stuff that we've talked about today. It's like speaking to yourself better. It's like okay, if you can, if, and, and I know it doesn't work like that. By the way, I know again the ADHD side of things, the bipolar side of things. Oh yes, if only I could use this superpower for everything that I want to use it for, rather than <laughs> rather than learning all there is to know about chord progressions on a youtube video or something or whatever my my adhd decides that it wants to be interested in that day um but yeah it's like that iron will is there to be used for uh, for the continuing good of uh, of the rest of this journey and i suppose it's it's once you know what door to push really isn't it it's like which you know like because yeah. but yeah you it's it's it certainly sounds like but once you've got your mind set on something that it's happening which is which is awesome. Is there anything else from all of this that I've not asked about that you want to include? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> um, if anyone in chat has anything to ask Asta, um, please chuck it in there. I've I've kind of d- got done all of mine to be honest. We've uh, got through a hell of a lot in a really short space of time there to be honest. Uh, I, I need to learn to be as quick with my answers as you are with yours. It's like I just sometimes I'll be on a podcast and I'll get asked three questions and then two hours have gone by and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's no questions so oh. far, but a lot of love for you in the chat. Nothing to ask, just thanks for being vulnerable with us. Yeah. Another speed run. Uh, was it, were, you, were, you, were, you a, were you a speed run on Wabbers? <laughs> yeah. We did the whole interview in a that one. <laughs> I was thinking about 20 minutes in, I'm like, I'm going to run out of questions soon. <laughs> like, because uh, you just give very, very quick answers. I mean, it's good. You give the, inform- you give the information. Um, but it's, it's Under an hour. Yeah, under an hour. Trust the D for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've seen, yeah, but you've seen mine. They don't always go for under an hour. In fact, they rarely, they rarely go for under an hour. But yeah, Wab- Wabba knows that, you know, you'd, very rarely, you'd get about three answers out of me in an hour. Uh, Wabba knows that quite intimately. Yeah, for me, it's, I think that's my ADHD. <laughs> well, I was going to say mine's the opposite though, because mine goes in the f- the fixated version. If I'm just going to give you, like I used to always make the joke about, you know, when someone says like a picture says a thousand words, but on, when I on when, on Instagram when I used to put pictures on there, I'd also write a really big caption. It's like so a picture says a thousand words, and here's another thousand words to go with those thousand words because I'm just lots and lots of words. Well, um, well, thank you very much for coming on and talking to us, and no as, as like. I've got to say, I'm really. I'm just going to say it again. I'm really, I'm really pleased with like where you've come in the last sort of six months. But in particular, um, I'm really, really pleased with the last week or so. Like, I didn't know I'd be. I actually didn't know today that I'd be walking into an interview with you saying that you're proud of yourself, which nearly made me cry. Um, I didn't know that. I'd be. I didn't know that I'd be coming into that that level of uh, progress because all of that's happened in the last week whilst I've been not around and stuff. So it's. Um, I was just really excited when you said today that you were. Uh, I think you said you were an eight out of five or something in the in the stream when we did the mental health check in, uh, and I thought that was just down to being excited to speaking to me. But it sounds like there's a hell of a lot going on there, <laughs> and it sounds like there's. Um, sounds like some really really big steps are being made, and yeah, I think that's just utterly fantastic. Yeah, I'm not there, but small steps, and I will get there. Yeah, and look, um, you know, we'll continue to we'll continue to support you and all of that. And uh, it's been it's just been it's been a pleasure to kind of be, you know, I say by your side, like remotely via text chats and stuff. But it's been it's been it's just been a pleasure to see that progress. Um, as I say, particularly over the last six months, because. What I said to you before is like when you said about being realistic is there was a point where you didn't think this was realistic and uh, you know what? Did I say that? Well, there was well, there was the, yeah. Like <laughs> I, you, you, you know, I've heard you say it's never going to get any better. There's no way it's ever going to get any better. I'm utterly unfixable. I heard a lot well I say heard I've read in chat <laughs> a lot of these things. So um, so to to come this far. 
and I'm just going to, like, first of all, not to discredit how far you've come so far, I th really think this is just the beginning still for you. So It is the beginning. Yeah. A beginning of a better life. Yeah. So, yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and, no problem. Yeah.